And I'm Andrew Snyder, and I lead the content strategy and solutions team at Yahoo, which means my team gets to think about how to create opportunities for brands that stem from all the great content and programming that lives across Yahoo. Uh, and you know, it occurs to me that while we've been here, there's been a lot of great conversation. Conversation about things like programmatic and the evolution of programmatic video advertising. We've talked a lot about branded content experiences and how brands now have access to large audiences. The barriers to entry to distribute branded content are truly gone. And there's been a lot of discussion about how to develop breakthrough content experiences that really engage, that truly engage with consumers. That's what we're here to talk about today, specifically live sports. You know, it occurs to me that in the realm of live sports, one of the things that's frequently cited as a reason that, that consumers might not choose to cut the cord is access to live sports programming. Well, we decided to run an experiment that, that would test whether or not we could find large audiences with a global live stream of an NFL game. It's never been done before, but in partnership with the National Football League, we created that very opportunity on October 25th when we live streamed a game between the Jaguars and the Bills uh, live from Wembley Stadium in London and made it available for free around the world to consumers who had the opportunity to access that game on every single device. A big endeavor, a complicated endeavor, an expensive endeavor, but one that we think uh, creates the opportunity for all of us to understand more about how consumers will engage in over-the-top delivery of live sports programming. What we thought would be really interesting for you today would be to give you a real look at what goes into forming a vision, uh, what goes into developing the production approach, and to understanding consumer and advertiser impact uh, through an event like this. And who better to help us understand all of that than the guy who architected uh, the partnership with the NFL. So it's my pleasure to introduce and invite to the stage Phil Lynch, who runs global media and content partnerships for Yahoo. Hello, sir. You got walk-up music. Oh, yeah. I don't think I had any walk-up music. Too, I think. Yeah. Who was that? <laughs> Well, Phil, uh, it's great to have you here, and thanks for doing something a little bit different. We don't usually have the opportunity to take you out to meet advertisers, and we really rarely sort of pull back the curtain a little bit to, to reveal what goes into driving uh, the success of partnerships like this. But before we dive in, could you just talk a little bit about your role at Yahoo? What's the kind of work that you do, and uh, how are you creating these partnerships? Sure. Uh, first of all, thanks for having me, and, and great to meet you guys. It's been uh, Fun getting to know you over the last couple of days, and, and we'll make myself available, and would love to continue the dialogue post-panel. Uh, as Andrew mentioned, my name's Phil Lynch. I joined Jan um, Yahoo in January of last year, so almost a year, uh, and my role is Vice President, Head of Media and Content Partnerships. Uh, so what that means is controlling all of our third-party uh, content rights, which is about 3,000 partners globally. Uh, that fit within all of our content verticals. So obviously some of the larger ones are news, sports, and finance. However, uh, we also have what we refer to as magazines around do-it-yourself, style, celebrity, so on and so forth. There's about 20 different uh, content verticals that we oversee. Uh, we also oversee and manage all of the business affairs as it pertains to uh, our original productions and branded entertainment. And then uh, most recently have taken on the responsibility of distribution beyond the Yahoo network. So as we look to take our originals or our programming and we distribute it in Yahoo branded apps on places outside of our network, uh, that would be a big focus for us over the next year or so. Great. So I love the theme of experimentation that we've been discussing here at the event and that Josh referred to earlier. This is a big experiment. And can you talk a little bit about, for a partnership like this, what's the vision and uh, what were the things that mattered both to Yahoo and to the NFL in an experiment of this magnitude? Sure. It's, uh, it's interesting. I think when you think about uh, the size of this ex experiment, as you said, it's uh, in typical Yahoo fashion. It's, it's very easy to dip your toe in the water. So you might as well start with the live NFL game where, <laughs> where the stakes are high and there's no room for error. Uh, but we decided to give it the best. But a little bit of history. Uh, we have a multi-year, very successful and very productive relationship with the NFL. Uh, we have driven uh, billions of streams of their VOD content, mostly post-game highlights, uh, for probably the last seven or eight years. 
Uh, and as the NFL was taking this game to market, very true historical event, and as they treat with their IP, and it is the NFL, they treat their IP probably and put barriers around it more than anybody. They're the best in the world at it. Uh, they were really looking at four key pillars to find a distribution platform here. Uh, the first, uh, obviously, was a global scale. Uh, Yahoo can obviously deliver on that global scale, but what was interesting is there are several other providers that can obviously deliver a global scale as well. However, Yahoo was uniquely positioned in that we had a global sports audience. So I think if you look at some of the other distribution platforms they were, they were speaking with at the time, I think we really uniquely positioned ourselves in terms of that global sports audience we could bring. The second piece they really wanted to uh, test and, and learn about was kind of cross-platform distribution. Um, so it's no secret, obviously, Yahoo has a billion uh, unique users, very large scale, very heavy desktop penetration. Uh, we are expanding exponentially in mobile. Uh, with the acquisition of Tumblr, obviously, that was a very interesting piece of the puzzle here, as well as the Tumblr demographic, which we can get into. And then finally, on the connected TV piece uh, through game consoles and set-top boxes. Then thirdly was uh, kind of the data. You have the NFL. Uh, they are very, very uh, interested in understanding how their fans and, and brands and, and how consumers interact with brands. Uh, and they really, really wanted to understand how consumers were going to be Watching this content, how are they going to be watching it on phones versus connected TV? Would they be putting the phone down and picking it back up on their Roku machine? And obviously, our, our analytics suite was able to develop that. And then thirdly was they wanted flawless execution uh, on the product and technical side. And I think, again, we were very uniquely positioned there given our experience uh, with our Live Nation concert series where we've been streaming one live music concert a day for about a year and a half right now. So I think as you put all of those pieces together for those four particular bullets. I think Yahoo was very uniquely positioned versus the other folks that they were talking to, so it made sense to put this partnership together, and uh, we were lucky enough to win the business. So let's talk about the game a little bit itself. Uh, at, the, at the time, neither of the two teams, neither the Bills nor the Jags, were sitting atop their division. Not necessarily a game that would have enjoyed even national distribution here in the U.S. So we took a game that would have had largely local distribution and made it a global event. Is that right? It, it is. It's fair. It, it's, I think when you would, and I'm sure everybody in the room followed the press and the news, and <clears throat> both during the sales process as well as post the game, uh, it was very interesting to see a lot of the comparisons. And frankly, uh, there was no true comparison in terms of how this game was delivered both globally over the top compared to traditional television. Uh, if you look at things and you do a comparison around digital versus linear, uh, you know, something like the NLCS uh, championship between the Mets and, and Chicago did, I think, 8 million, uh, a rating of 8 million viewers. Uh, we obviously, you know, we'll get into the numbers, but, but beat that by a, a large margin. So there was no real true comparison in terms of what the data was going to bring out in terms of what the world has seen, but I think that's exactly the point. The point was it was two very small market teams at what was, let's just be honest, not the most ideal time slot. It was 6.30 a.m. Pacific time, 9.30 a.m. East Coast time. Uh, so it was all about kind of trying to drive that audience. And here you have a situation where had that game gone through their traditional windows or their traditional models, um, it, it's, it's, it's all hearsay, but the expectation is probably between one to two million people would have tuned in for that game. And here's a situation where we were able to, to bring over 15 million users to those two brands. So I think uh, both from our side, you know, obviously a big win, and, and the folks at the NFL were extremely happy. So we flashed some of the numbers really quickly in that opening montage, and you talked about the fact that there are 15 million people who tuned in at one point or another to watch that game. Can you talk a little bit more about uh, what went into defining success on, on this partnership. Clearly, you had a plan when going in on what we would look at in terms of the key success metrics on determining whether or not this was a, the kind of experiment that we would do again. Yeah, absolutely. As I said, the, the, the two main things were global scale and then just a ubiquitous experience, uh, making sure that the stream w was, was steady and, and firm and, and never failed. And obviously, we hit both of those. But as the sizzle reel, uh, and Tasha, thanks for pulling that together. It looked great. Um, so that suggests we did over 33 million viewers, um, which is obviously a, a large number of viewers in a three-hour time slot, again, at 6.30 a.m. PST, which was, that equated to over 15 million uniques. 
um, to touch to the global scale that the game was aired and viewed in over 185 countries, which I think is, uh, you know, again, exactly what they were looking for. Uh, and then obviously on the advertiser side, you and your team did a fantastic job uh, of filling all of the ad slots. Well, thank you. Uh, it's really due to the support of people like all of you in the room. You know, just a quick comment on that. Big new initiatives and investment like this require risk on all parties' uh, sides, and we really appreciate the partnership from all of you that helped us complete our effort and mission to sell out the ad time in the games. This is a big, big, important uh, success metric for us. Thank you for taking the leap with us, for those of you who joined in the cause. Uh, you know, I loved one of the comments from uh, one of our engineers, maybe a guy in our ops department, who said something like, uh, like this. He said, in order to pull off a game like this, we had to reserve a significant portion of the available bandwidth on the internet on Sunday morning. Can you talk about that and like what does that, I mean, what, what, what was that feeding? Yeah, I mean, I'll be a little over my skis as we get into the, the technical conversation, but um, obviously, as I alluded to earlier, th there was zero room for error in this game. Uh, and so obviously, the testing and the distribution endpoints and the marketing plan and, and just running the testing at scale uh, leading up to the game was a very interesting process. If you start to think about, um, kind of total hours and the amount of data that was pushed through those pipes. Obviously, we had to reserve a ton of capacity if and when the traffic spiked at particular times, and frankly, it did in the fourth quarter. For those of you that watched the game, uh, it actually turned into what was kind of uneventful for three quarters into a fantastic football game in the fourth quarter. Uh, but if you start to look at some of the, 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 the core streaming metrics, we did nine petabytes of data during that three-hour period, which again, 6.30 in the morning Pacific time is amazing. We did over 460 million hours. Um, so I think as you start to see as users were both on Tumblr and Yahoo consuming, they were actually sticking with the content as well. So. I thought it was, uh, it was interesting for us internally. It was a total comprehensive effort across so many divisions of the company. In fact, uh, those of you who may follow Marissa on her social media channels may have seen a photo that she posted to Tumblr pulling into the Yahoo parking lot, which was totally full at about 5 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. It took that kind of an effort for people to pull off a production like this, and, uh, and the results speak for themselves. Um, anything else that, uh, that you think was particularly innovative that we did in the course of the production of the game? Yeah, there, there, was, there was two things that seemed to resonate very well with consumers. And I think one, uh, you know, I have to give the credit to the NFL for thinking about it. But the NFL is in a situation of where they, and, and they're very public about it, they, they, are, they are trying hard and, and being successful at building their brand globally, right? They've been very uh, open about the London series. They've tested in other territories as well. Uh, part of this element, what they wanted to do with Yahoo uh, during this experiment was they wanted to speed up the pace of the game. So I'm not sure if you guys noticed as consumers, but uh, we actually uh, minimized a few of the ad breaks so that the, the gameplay and the speed play would go a little bit faster. And I think one of the, the, the most obvious example is when you typically watch an NFL game, the team kicks off the ball, the other team returns it, and then after the return, you go to a commercial break. But for this game in particular, both teams ran out to the field and they just kind of kept the deal going because I think as they're trying to build that expectation around NFL football, they want it to be exciting and new. So I think as, as that was a very interesting piece. The second piece, um, which got a lot of positive press, was we were playing around with our broadcast audio track. So we had the traditional... Um, commentators, which was the CBS team. Rich Gannon was the lead. Uh, we had the SAP version, but we created our third audio track where we took two ex-NFL players that played for both of the teams, and they overlaid their commentary throughout the game with a fantasy spin. So rather than listening to the traditional broadcasters, you could actually opt in to do the fantasy track. Uh, and a lot of folks actually really, really were encouraged by that. And I think it was a very interesting way to be able to not, number one, only interact with the content, but how they responded to it. And uh, I think from their point of view, it, it'll be interesting to see as we begin to test some of those things uh, kind of moving forward. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about maybe some of the data-driven insights that we were able to gather through the game? What, what else did we learn about how people would engage on various devices? It's interesting. So I think, you know, again, going back to the four anchor tennis of the NFL, um, what was very interesting was, was the morning of the game and 
during the game, I think stakes were high and anxiety was high on, on all parts of just trying to make sure that the, the stream really you know, st st stayed live. And what happened was for about the last 48 hours, what was very interesting, the NFL, as everybody knows, they are just geniuses at controlling their rights and how people interact with their brand. But we spent a good 48 hours with their team just literally diving into the log data in terms of how people consumed with the content, how people consumed with the advertiser. People would wake up in the morning and their cell phone was next to their bed. And you could literally see that user because Yahoo obviously has a lot of logged in users uh, throughout our ecosystem. So you could see that user that would actually pick up his phone and watch it on his phone for maybe the first quarter, but then kind of migrate into the living room to make breakfast, where then you would see the Roku stream going, and then you would maybe see it back on the tablet. So it was very interesting to kind of follow that customer journey. And as you would kind of also then kind of go out into the social stream and find out what some of the comments were, there was a lot of people talking about, you know, they were able to watch it on Wi-Fi over their airplane for once. It was the first time ever they could watch it in cab drivers. We saw, obviously, it was on all sorts of distribution platforms. I think no surprise to any of you guys. Um, what was very promising, I think, was the connected TV space. So obviously the Rokus, the Xboxes, some of the smart TV manufacturers. We averaged north of 150 minutes per viewing session, which means basically people were setting it on their TV and watching it, right? I think as you look at you know, the phone, uh, you would watch it for a little bit on your phone, uh, you know, kind of maybe interact with other apps, interact with your fantasy, but kind of keep coming back. They had a lot of, there was a high retention rate of visits for those users, but the connected TV people, and I think the market truly is there with this long form premium content of just kind of setting it on the dial, putting it down, and just watching a full game for three hours. So I think that was very encouraging. Um, I think, again, going back to our Tumblr play and Yahoo's recent uh, progression in the mobile space, uh, about 30% of the overall usage was actually on the mobile phone, which I think uh, was encouraging and, and big for the NFL. And then we were about 33% international. Um, and one of the most interesting points to me on the international piece um, was, for those that don't know, the game was actually, even though it was exclusive digitally, it was on air in both Buffalo and Jacksonville, but it was also on air in the UK. Uh, and perhaps one of the most interesting things from data, from my point of view, is more people in the UK actually watch the game digitally than over the air on free broadcast. So I think if you start to really think about that consumer behavior, a big game where they're marketing the NFL in a region like that, that has over the air distribution for free, yet consumers still decided to watch on their, on their digital devices, I think it really proves that you know, the internet, and particularly Yahoo, we're, we're ready for live streaming, particularly as it pertains to sports right now. So to me, that was a very exciting data point. So it's an interesting glimpse into the future in terms of what consumers might be ready for. Um, but as it pertains to Yahoo, as we think about the future based on our experience here, what's the future of live sports for us, and how are you thinking about it within your team? Yeah, so, so I think um, you know, there's a couple of things. Yahoo is certainly not the first to try live entertainment, right? I think a lot of folks ha have tried it. I think. Where Yahoo deserves a lot of credit uh, was getting their Live Nation deal off, off the ground. And frankly, uh, they committed to doing a live stream every single day. So when you would, as a consumer, go to the Yahoo homepage, every single day there was that expectation that there would be a live event. And I think that's very different than what a lot of folks in the market are doing, where they do a live concert here or an event you know, after a full moon or you know, wherever it might work. But there's no repetition and consistency. And I think by Yahoo kind of really focusing on Live Nation kind of as the baseline, we've then uh, completely you know, developed and, and continued to build off of that program. We expanded this year into Live Nation festivals. So we did uh, five or six of their festivals this year, which are literally three-day events of live streaming, nonstop, 72 hours. Uh, we did things like EDC in Vegas, Creamfields in the UK. We expanded our live infrastructure to support iHeartRadio, so we now live broadcast uh, their album release parties. So as they have a new artist coming to market, uh, we, we have a big production crew around there. We've, we continue to work very closely with our partner NBC Sports that we are driving tune-in and viewing of Sunday Night Football. Uh, and I think that you'll continue to see that. And we've also done things with the NFL. We, do, we live stream the draft. We live stream the combine every year. And then also with our edit, editorial staff, we're now focusing pretty significantly on uh, like activation around live events, whether that be the Emmys or the Billboard Music Awards. And we do a lot of red carpet interviews and a lot of uh, kind of interaction with both talent as well as consumers there. I think uh, in terms of moving forward, I think um, 
you know, I think Yahoo is, is very serious about our continued investment in live sports. I think one thing that's very exciting, uh, and hopefully you guys would all like to participate in this, and, and Andrew and his team will be coming to market with it very shortly, uh, but for the start of next season's Major League Baseball season, we will now be airing one live baseball game a day. Uh, so we're going to be calling that the free game of the day. So literally every single day of the Major League Baseball game, there will be a live Major League Baseball game in the Yahoo player. Uh, we did a similar deal uh, with the PGA Tour, where for all PGA events that are broadcast by CBS, we will also live stream the full event on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, very exciting. And then uh, there's actually a third one that I was actually hoping to announce today, which isn't happening, but I will tease it at that. But you will probably be seeing in the next probably two weeks or so another probably big announcement from us on uh, the sports side. Very intriguing. I can't wait to hear more. Sounds like we have our work cut out for us over on the sales side of the house. And the product side. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for helping feed these kinds of opportunities in the market. It's exciting for us to be able to take new breakthrough solutions out to our customers and to be able to come in and uh, share with you what those new opportunities look like. It takes a lot of work and a huge effort, um, but ultimately it helps us move our relationship forward and indeed move the industry forward. So uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to Phil for being here to share so much great information with us today. Thank you, Thanks Phil, for, for being me. here. Uh, and uh, we'd love to take any questions that you guys might have. I think there are a couple of microphones yep. available. Anybody have any questions? They're settling questions? into no blanket-induced food coma, Phil. They all want to buy the MLB. <laughs> no questions. All right. I guess you guys covered. Oh, okay. no. Uh, thanks so much for a great presentation. Uh, what is on the agenda for future content? You know, are you targeting certain sports that you look to do live? And uh, maybe we can chat about that a bit. Yeah, I think, um, uh, you know, starting broadly, right? I, I think Yahoo, um, we, we've kind of fo narrowed our focus a little bit in terms of what we're looking for, for in terms of video content specifically. Uh, I think where you're going to start to see us place our bets are, one, in terms of those 20 digital magazines I talked about. Uh, so we'll continue to, one, continue to produce in-house content for that. We do actually 66 shows internally and over 8,000 8, hours of original programming every year in-house by our studio. The other piece of that puzzle is obviously um, what my day job is, is, is our wonderful third-party partners and how we license in content from them to live in those verticals. I think it's very interesting, you know, you've seen some things in the news, it's not necessarily long form, it's not scripted, but it's how does it fit specifically within our magazines rather than kind of creating a standalone experience. Uh, and then I think to your question about sports, uh, it's very much live sports, it's a very tricky landscape as you guys know, and it's about trying to find the opportunities of where we can kind of make the biggest splash or the biggest bang for our buck. Uh, there's no shortage of opportunities coming out of this NFL stream. Um, just by answering the phone in terms of a lot of issues around local broadcast rights for a lot of the major leagues. A lot of teams control their local rights and I think they're now kind of considering to maybe go beyond television directly over the top. So I think, uh, you know, where our point of view is we obviously want global, but if we can't get global, we obviously need national. We want to be able to activate our audience. I think the less focused um, kind of local territories, kind of game by game. You got the Red Bulls here, the San Jose Earthquakes here. I think that's a little bit more difficult for us to pull off. But content in general is around the magazines and then our original productions and then sports. And sports generically. Great. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Yahoo. Awesome. Great. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.